Hello everyone, happy Saturday. It's Lisa from Lisa's Paint Parties and I'm here with you um, just before two o'clock. So um, just to make sure we get everyone jumped on here, we're gonna be doing um, a really uh, intricate but fun painting, um, the Mystical Mushrooms painting. Um, so that painting, I would suggest you have um, it available. So if you can grab um, the picture of it from one of our previous posts um, and just have it beside you, just so you can refer to it as we go. Because um, as you know, anyone who's joined um, in the past, uh, we don't, I don't have the ability to have the picture in the screen as we're going, but I will talk you through the process. Um, so the one we're doing today is, let's see, can you see that okay? There you go. So that is the painting we're doing. The mystical mushrooms are many components to this painting um, and um, a lot of which we've done um, in prior sessions so um, don't worry we will go through it um, and walk through it step by step um, it will take quite a bit of time though because we want things to dry to be able to put different details and more layers on um, so just keep that in mind as you go I'm going to be using um, an 11 by 14 uh, canvas board so you want it to be in portrait for this. You can change it up. You could do it in landscape if you desire, um, or if you have a circular canvas or something, you can change it up. I'm gonna be sticking true to the original and doing it in portrait. Um, so we'll start about mm, five minutes or so after two, just to make sure um, everyone um, who's going to be joining us and painting live with us um, has all their stuff and is ready to go. Um, I've have some music and a fan in the background. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, I just want to make sure I stay cool <laughs> in this room while we paint. All right, and as you guys jump on, please feel free to let me know that you're um, you're here and, and watching. Um, I love to see you guys uh, say hi and stuff, especially now, because once we get into painting, um, you guys commenting is not going to happen in the same way. Um, I'll keep an eye on my um, comments as we go through. So if you have any questions as um, we're going through the process, I will try to keep an eye and uh, con like me message you back or con like say something back to you. Um, fantastic. So see Crystal's watching. Hi, Crystal. Hope you're doing good. And hi, Bethany. Hey, Lucy. Hi, Candice. This is awesome. Great. Thanks, guys. Hi, Allison. This is really nice. I like to be able to, even though I can't see you guys, the weird thing, it'd be nice to actually have everyone like together and we could, you know, be here together live, but just one day soon. Hi, Melanie from Oshawa. You're my neighbor. I like it. Where I'm in Ajax, so I can, I can almost feel Melanie's presence. <laughs> Awesome. All right, cool. So I'm going to get started by um, just so what I have so far is I have my paintbrushes. So I have, let me see what I, what do I have actually? So I have a, a bigger paintbrush, a medium and a fine. So I have that ready to go. I have some paper towel. I think I'll need more than that to be honest. And I don't think I have that roll up here. Oh, I, I know where it is. I'm going to grab it. Bah. Okay, there we go. Paper towel roll. That's important. I have my water container. I have my the painting reference um, so I can see it. My canvas is good to go. And then the paints. So again, um, I always say all you really need is your primary color. So we have our blue, yellow, and red. And you have your black and white. So as long as you have these five paint colors, um, you'll be able to make any other color you so desire. If you have other paints that are already pre-mixed, um, that's fantastic too. I have some as well. I have an orange, a green, a purple, a brown, and a pink available just behind. So I might grab those as well, um, just because sometimes it's just easier um, when you're in the process to have something that's mixed a bit. Um, great. Hi, Kathleen. Oh, I'm glad that you're excited to try the painting. I think it's going to turn out so much fun. It's going to be great. Again, it's it's prepare for it to be a bit of a process, <laughs> but it's gonna be really fun and really rewarding when it's done. Hey, Diana. Oh, you're an Oshawa girl too. There we go. I love it. East End. Hi, Mary. I wonder, are you gonna be joining painting today? That'd be awesome. Just gonna throw my hair up before I forget and um, not do that. 
and then we will get started momentarily. I think what I'll start to do is um, let's talk through like how we're going to approach this painting. So let me see if I can bring my screen over so I can reference as I'm talking. Okay, so okay, so as with any painting that we're trying to emulate. Um, and we're doing with acrylic, you need to start with whatever's in the back first. So we're going to start with the sky. Um, with the sky, we're going to start with getting it pretty much like two-thirds of the way down. And it's going to be a lot of fun. The first layer we're going to put on is not going to look as beautiful as this. It's going to look kind of crappy, so don't stress out when we start it off. We just need to get paint on our canvas in this general feel. And then we're gonna start to layer and get some nice colors and all these details into it. So think of it as a process. We're gonna start with like a base, get that going, and then we're gonna go from there. Once we have the sky done, and that's gonna be a really fun thing to do, the sky is gonna be awesome, we're gonna get our trees in. And so we've already done a circle sky like this before if you've joined a previous paint party, so it's not difficult to do. There is some blending, there's some technique, but really fun. We've also done many trees in the past, so you guys are good with your sky and your trees, and we'll figure that out, and we'll, I'll talk you guys through it as well. A couple different layers, we'll do like a darker tree layer, and then we'll do like a lighter one after. And then we get into all of the details in the front. And so I'm going to try to stay fairly true to this painting. Um, so I'll do the mushrooms and get you guys some vibe on that, and I'll do the crystals as well. If you decide that you want to change it up and you want to put your own elements in there, feel free to do so. You can also change it up and only put like one um, mar um, let's say marshmallow. I'm going to call them marshmallows. <laughs> I mean mushrooms um, as you go. So we can change it up as we go. Um, and then we'll start doing the front and we'll get into some of the details there. Okay. But the sky and the trees, uh, we're going to hit on first and then we're going to get into the foreground of the details. All right, guys. Okay. I'm just going to get that hooked up. My computer likes basically run out of battery really quickly. So I'm just going to make sure it's plugged in. Awesome. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting some paint just on my palette. Um, a couple key things to keep in mind. If you haven't painted before, just a reminder if you have, acrylic dries very quickly. So um, depending on the size of canvas you have, you will just try to eyeball how much you need right away on your palette. I always try to like keep it in the actual bottles as much as possible because it will dry my palette and then I can't use it. Um, especially with a fan going in my room. So if you're outdoors or if you have a fan going, it's gonna dry faster, so just keep that in mind. Um, same when we're starting to do the blending. Um, the blending is going to be really fun to do, but every time the paint dries, um, it's not gonna blend as easier. Again, that's gonna help us in some ways when we want some of the color to pop, um, but I just wanna keep that in mind. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna move this so you can see my canvas. Position thing so I don't have things falling. Oh my goodness. All right. I think that is good. I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit. I learned I could do that last time. It was very exciting. Okay, cool. So there we go. There is the canvas. Okay. So the sky is, there's blue in it. So I'm gonna get some blue on my palette. I am going to do like, it's 11 by 14 and I am going to use quite a bit of blue to do a lot of the mixing. So I'm going to do a pretty good dollop of blue on my palette. I want some red because I do want some purples going on and that red is going to allow me to achieve some of those purples. There is some greens and yellows. I'm not going to worry too much about that. A little to the left. Is that all right? It's a bit tricky. I also found out too that I think sometimes the video actually um, flips it for you guys. Like when I say when I start painting my right, you might actually see it on the left for some reason, and I don't really know why. Okay, so right now I go. Okay. I need to get some in the middle there. Okay, so I have my red, my blue, my green, no, my red, my blue, my yellow, my black, and my white on my palette. Um, I have some pre-mixed colors. I don't think I'm going to worry about that too much yet. Hi, Andrew. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm so glad you're joining today. 
All right, so I'm gonna get my big brush. I kind of want a bigger brush than this one, actually. Last week I did a smaller one, and I think I need a bigger, fatter brush. Yeah, that's the one I want. All right, so I'm just getting one that has a bit more coverage on it instead of this one, which is bigger, but it's more of a rounder tip. So that's gonna just let me cover my canvas a little bit easier. All right, so um, let's start off. I'm gonna start off with getting the shape of this and I'm gonna start with my blue. Okay, right on my brush. And I wanna get some of these corners in the blue color. So as you go, just remember to color in the size of your canvas as well. Okay, and we're gonna start to just put blue on the canvas. You're gonna need quite a bit of paint. I'm not gonna water this down to begin with. I want to make it as opaque as possible. So I'm gonna get this blue going. The blue, I'm, the one I'm using is called Peacock Blue <laughs> from the dollar store. So it's a little brighter, I would say, than some other blues. Okay, so I'm just gonna start kind of getting this circle kind of feeling where I want that to live. And I'm gonna go all the way around. This is where the trees are gonna go. It's gonna cover this area anyways, but I want to kind of have this continuity going. But you don't need to worry about making that look as nice as the other spots because you're gonna have that all covered up with trees and stuff. Okay, so I would want, I want my corners, these corners to be dark. I'm gonna get a little, 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 little dab of black and I'm gonna dab them in the corners. My, the paint is still wet, so it's gonna blend in really nice. And I'm just gonna pull it slightly down so it kind of starts having a little bit of a gradient. And I'm gonna do the same thing, a little dab of black on this side. And like I said, you wanna do this when the paint is still wet so that it blends easily. So it just pulls itself down into it. So now it just has a bit of darkness in that corner, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go back to my blue. Wet this up a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna get some white, and now I'm gonna start to make it a little lighter. So I'm just gonna bring the white around the circle. I'm putting it on the actual canvas, and then I'm pulling it into the blue. So white on the brush, on the canvas, and then I'm pulling it into the blue. So we're just gonna get the feeling of the circular sky shape. Okay. And now we already have a bit of a gradient of like the dark blue, the main blue color, and the white. Okay. And there's some little canvas dots poking out. So I'm just gonna put some blue on that. Okay. I don't wanna pull the white too far back I want it to stay with the blue so I'm getting darker blue and I'm going back into the white so I'm just going to kind of go back and forth playing with this dark blue and this white I want more white to come more in so I'm just going to put another little layer of white and I'll lighten it up slightly And with my, again, like I mentioned, my fan is drying it very quickly. So I'm gonna be painting it quickly just so my blending will still work. Or else it will be too, won't, won't be very great. Okay, so Anita, yeah, we are painting the um, Mystical Mushrooms painting, this one here. Hopefully you can see that okay. So we're painting that one today. Should be quite fun. I'm gonna get 
Mm, this is going to turn pink on me. I know it. Okay, I'm going to mix a little bit of red into my blue on my palette just so I can maybe get a bit of a purple kind of going before it turns pink if I just add the red on my canvas. Okay, so I just want to get a little bit of purple happening. I'm just going to get that in. Okay, and then I want to lighten that up with some white and blend that a little bit. I don't want it to go too far into the colors we already did, but the streakiness is fine. It's welcomed. So we're going to be doing some more of that later. Okay, and again, as a reminder, it is acrylic paint, so because it dries fast, it's also really great because if you do something and you don't like it, you can wait till it dries and redo it. And that's the lovely freedom that you have with it. I put some blue back on my brush just so I can keep the blue going. Okay, and now we're gonna go into like a yellow uh, we want to get a green and then it then goes into a pure yellow so i'm just going to get some yellow on my brush and then just start touching it in here start getting that color change happening i'm still using the same brush and i have not wet it or washed it at all yet i'm just still going with it a little weird. I don't like that there. So we're just going to make this nice and streaky. Okay. And then I want to then go more yellowy orange as we loop in, but yellowy orange and white, I think. Okay, so we're going to get more yellow. And a little bit of red in there. If you have a pre-mixed orange, you can use that too. I want it not to be like super orange. It's almost like just a touch of it in the actual um, yellow. Like a dirty orange. <laughs> no, a dirty yellow. <laughs> there we go. And again, this is just to get the sky with a background on it. And then we are going to play with it once we have this color on. Okay, and then I want white. In the center. Okay, so that's the base of it. It doesn't look exactly the way the painting is yet, right? We just have the base, so we have color on the canvas. Okay, so now, because my painting is dry, <laughs> like I said, it's pretty crazy. Um, I'm just gonna now wash my big brush out so I'm not going to use it for a little bit. I'm going to use a, a thinner one and I want to start to put in some of the more concentrated layers of color into the circle. My water is pretty murky already. I might, I'm probably going to have to change it or go change it in a little bit. Even, even as I'm doing this, my brush has so much blue. If you look, look, there's so much blue. That's all my brush. I'm just gonna, I like to make sure they're clean between it because the acrylic will ruin your brushes. So just be cautious. Okay, I'm gonna try, I think, which brush am I gonna start with? Yeah, I'm gonna do my medium kind of brush. I need more white on my palette. Use that. Okay. And I think I am going to grab my pre-mixed purple just because it won't, it'll be easier because everything's drying out quicker. So that'll be easier for me to keep up with as we're going. So after the purple, um, I went in and I put a little bit more blue just so it continues to blend. And then I added um, a bit of yellow to start this kind of green. It's very light. Again, we're going to add it when we put in more strokes in. And then from the yellow, just which made that green, then you just kind of build it into a yellow and then you put a little bit of red to give a tint of orange and then white. That was a lot of steps. 
<laughs> but that that was it. So we from the purple go into a blue and then go into a yellow and then continue from there. Okay, so now let's start and play with some of these colors and these lines. So these are gonna be more, I want some blue back on my palette too actually. Okay. And I think, I might switch out of this one after, I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm going to use my medium brush. I have some purple on here right now and I'm just gonna add some curves to it. So follow what you just did. And just add some purple again it's gonna look weird right now just add some purple okay, keep this kind of curve line thing going okay. I'm gonna add a bit more than what I will probably have by the end because things are gonna build around it Then I'm going to go grab blue and do the same kind of thing and put some blue lines. in that and now continue this so on the areas that it's dry the white will stick more on the areas that it's wet it will blend more keep going. I might go back to my purple, kind of blend it a little bit, but now we got some kind of this violet going on, which is nice. Okay. And then now we're going to go in, I think we're going to put in some green, we're going to get some yellow and some blue, and just some lines. Oh, it's still very yellowy. Get a few, maybe I'll use a pre-mixed one after. I don't know if that's getting me what I want. I kind of want it to be more green. Okay, so I'm just using my pre-mixed green as well, just to get me the color I want. And actually, it was kind of the color of it. I'm always so surprised. Every time I use my pre-mixed green and I compare it to the color that was on, that I made myself, it's always very similar and I'm always disappointed. <laughs> I'm like, I thought it would be brighter. <laughs> well, there you go. I guess green is just, that's the green we got. So I'm just going to go, I just put some more white in, and I'm just going to play with this. This is all just color play, and it's all just following this kind of circular pattern. It's going to end up making a curve, but we need to get some orange and red going on just cleaning off my brush from the purple because I don't want that to happen there. Um, maybe I'll start from there. You know what, I'm gonna get some white on my brush now and I'm just actually gonna maybe start a bit of a plan of how I want this to curve out. So I think I'm gonna start like this. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put in a bit of white in the middle of how I want it to start curving out a bit this little spiral effect that's gonna end up guiding the rest of the lines. Okay, so with white now, I just kind of created the path that we're gonna be playing with. And now I'm gonna go back and we're gonna put some yellow in the same way we just did. I might switch to my thinner brush. Depending. Actually, this one's doing what I want it to do. Okay, 
So the white is obviously too much of a, a line, so I'm gonna dull that down with the yellow with the yellow on top of it, but it still stays lighter. Okay. I just got red on my brush, and I'm just gonna try to get some of this orangey into this. Thing I can deal with this fan on because it's not letting me blend the way I need it to blend. You might see me sweating profusely, but I can't handle this drying this quickly. I need more yellow. Okay, we'll see. going to keep building this. This is not the way it's going to end up. It's not the way I want it yet. Country music today. That's fun. getting white. I'm just mixing going between the white and the yellow. But I do want it to be a little bit orangey. I feel like it's just getting this like salmon color. Sorry, Allison. Yes, this is Ask Liz. Thank you, Diana, for replying. I really appreciate it. Yes, this will absolutely be posted. So it'll be available in the uh, posted videos. So you can watch it at any time. Thanks for replying, Diana. I really appreciate it. I was getting very into my circles. And <laughs> especially when it, like, at this point, it never is the way I want it to be. And so I get a little stressy, especially with everyone watching. <laughs> I'm like, is it not gonna turn out? Oh shit. Sorry, I shouldn't be swearing. Um, but yeah, I get a little like nervous, but I'm always like, okay, let's just keep going. This is when I stop looking at things and I just try to focus on getting it the way I want it to get. So yeah, me turning off the fan has helped quite a bit because now my paint isn't drying at super speed. Thank goodness, because that was driving me mad. I'm just going in, I'm just going to be continuing to put in some more. The white is a little bit too, like, bright on there. I don't like that. And there's a little bit too much green that I added initially, so I want to dull that down. Okay. I do want it to be predominantly a blue, streaky sky. getting it that's better I like the streaks on that way more okay so the middle I still want to work on a little bit and get that orange I do the yellow and red that I'm mixing and I have a pre-made orange too so I'm just gonna compare it with it get it a bit lighter I think there we go yeah cuz I was getting like a salmon color so when you use dollar store paints like I do 
Um, the colors aren't really like the pure color. So sometimes you end up getting, you know, you mix yellow and red, you get like a salmon color. That's not the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to get orange. But the, um, it's not like a pure red. So that, that's what's, what tends to happen. So that is the downfall of buying cheap paints because they're not necessarily the right colors. But they're cheap. So I'm just touching the orange in the same thing, but now playing with the orange and the yellow. Okay, so we have this circle motion going. The transition between here and here is not the greatest. I'm gonna move on to my um, finer brush. Just that medium brush isn't cutting it for me anymore and I wanna have a few more um, detailed kind of strokes in there. So I'm just gonna get my finer one and play with that now and do the same kind of thing only with a finer brush. Hi, Marion. All right, so yeah, let's go with a finer brush and we'll play with that a bit. All right. Um, Some more streaks in there, a different color. Okay. So this is, I'm just using red, but it's pretty wet still here, so the red's not sticking the way I want it to stick. I'm still gonna play with it a little bit because I still want it to not be super bright because there isn't really much red in there, but it will bring out the orange a little bit more. So I'm just putting in my finer brush, it's same as I did before, only now these streaks are thinner. And if you're going over wet canvas, it kind of still blends into it, but as you go over your dry canvas, the lines will be more prominent and more vibrant. And so the strokes as you get further out will usually be more long and flowing, more continuous versus the strokes in the middle might be a little bit like shorter, still be flowy like in a circle, circular shape, but it will be, it won't be as long. Orange in. The sky is down. I'm making mine a very rainbowy one, which I like. I actually, I enjoy all the colors in it. orange is coming through more but I like that I like how the orange and the blue um, being opposite colors they really makes a pop what's everyone else doing okay oh there's more comments one second 
shoot guys yes so allison is it posted right after um yeah absolutely so right after it's we finish the painting party around it's i'm thinking it's probably gonna take us till about four if not a bit later to be honest um it will be up and then you'll be able to watch it whenever you so desire um and yes wanda it will be absolutely so you'll be able to watch it afterwards as well how do i dull down the dark colors while making the mud that is a good question julia so the way you want to do that is um you try when you add more colors you don't bring them all the way in to the color you already added so I first started with the blue and then I had the black I had a little bit of black in there but I only kept it just to the corner and then I tried to blend it out without adding more color to the brush I kept the brush pretty dry and as I brought in more blue in when I went to the next color um, I kept it more on the canvas and just brought it into the existing paint again with a very dry brush so I didn't use like a lot of paint to do that um, and then once you get the other colors out on the side you want to basically stroke it to try to keep the true color so you only are so you're getting the purple for example and you're stroking and you're kind of leaving it the more you over stroke the more it's going to blend and you might get more of a mucky kind of look so I hope that helped and that was clear um, those are the ways to kind of avoid it. So when you're putting, especially when it's on a wet canvas, um, once it's dry, you can avoid that pretty easily and the, the paint and the colors will stick really nicely on. Yeah, so right now mine looks very, um, the one in the picture looks very smooth and mine looks very choppy. Um, I'm gonna see if I can help that out a little bit. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. I just wanna get a bit of um, like a light, almost like a lilac purple color and then I want to do like a light blue as well I feel like I'm missing I feel like mine's too dark okay so I'm gonna get a little bit of water and I'm doing I got like a lilac-y purple so in my purple I added some white and I'm just gonna add some streakies along the side I find it it's, I'm, I'm going a little too dark here and I want it to be a little bit brighter I don't want it to be like a creepy mushroom world. I want it to be like happy. <laughs> I feel like I'm going into the creepy zone. And then we need to try and smooth this out a little bit. anymore which is good I'm just putting some water on my brush just to kind of smooth out some of the lines that I've created with that purple gonna smooth out some of these lines too and what I'm doing by that is I'm getting the main color like so there's a lot of yellow going on in here so I'm putting quite a bit of water on my brush I'm putting a little bit of yellow paint on it and then I'm just kind of like smearing it in a circular more trying to be smoother motion with the water so it kind of gives it almost like a yellow wash on top of some of the paint I've done and I'm hoping, we'll see shortly, that should make it more smooth instead of this choppiness that I've created. But I don't want it to be like super yellow. I want it to be like, like a wash. Yeah, there we go. Almost like, it almost looks like a watercolor that I'm putting over the darker color. Yeah. That's better. I'm just getting water and kind of adding it to it and blending it out that way. Okay. 
Okay, that's giving it a more glowy effect. That's better. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see it. Um, but basically, I just put a bit of yellow, some water, and then I'm just trying to smooth it out a bit. It's still pretty choppy on the inside, so I have to, I think, make a few more solid lines that are a bit more flowy. So I'm going to get my yellow and do try and do that. gonna go into the orange be cautious of this orange because it kind of made it a bit too choppy I'm trying to keep my strokes as round ish as possible because mine were a little bit like I said a little choppy and then it took away the flow of this so I'm just trying to blend that in a little bit um, with some more water and then I'm getting whatever color so now I'm playing with the orange, so I'm getting a little bit of orange on my brush, kind of going over that orange line that I want to keep, but I want it softened. And then I put water on top of it, and then I soften it and try to blend it. Okay, and that is creating a more of a glowy effect versus this weird choppiness that I was doing. Let's do another one. So like. Let's see which other one I'd want to do. Look away from it. Okay, so here is like choppy kind of orange spot. So I'm going to get orange paint, but then I'm going to get quite a bit of water on my brush. And then I'm just going to smooth that one out. And bring it up a little bit, bring it down a little bit. And now it's no longer that like choppy line, but it looks like it kind of blends into the rest of it. Hopefully that helps. Good call, Diana. Yeah, purple and yellow. And when you want, when you uh, have opposite colors, especially, um, they will turn into gray. So like red and red and green, purple and yellow, and orange and blue. So you want to be cautious when the canvas is wet um, to do some blending of those two. If you blend them together, it turns it doesn't turn very well. So you kind of want it to be almost dry um, to have that effect going on. It's a really good point. Okay, good, good. I'm glad that was helpful, Julia. It's hard to uh, want to make sure you guys feel comfortable. <laughs> okay, okay I'm going to do the same thing here. So I want this to be curvy and yellow, but I want it to be a bit more smooth. So I put some yellow paint on, and then now I'm just getting my water. So for people who like have used watercolor before, you want that kind of feel to it, like you want it to almost feel very wet as you're doing that. For everyone else too, like if you haven't used it, it's totally fine. You're just gonna, it's almost like a wash. And that's gonna give it more of a softer vibe. I do want a bit of white in the middle here. There's already some white going on. Let's put some white and I'm just going to try to wash that around. Put some white in. And this is working because my canvas is pretty much completely dry and it's just the paint, what, what I'm adding to it is what I'm controlling with that water and the wetness. I'm going to be a little bit particular here because I don't like how big this yellow blob is in the middle that I did initially, so I'm going to just, or should I say white blob. I'm just going to put some yellow in it just to not make it so center. I think that's good. This The red lines are still a little bit choppy as well, so... I'm going to do the same thing with the red, but I am going to be cautious because red is so strong and powerful. So I'm going to put red on. 
on, get a lot of water, and then blend it out. Or I shouldn't say blend it. It's really, I'm just washing it out. So the line is still exists there, but it's not on its own. There's some more values around it. That line is actually not very, it's not curved properly. So I think that's actually throwing me off too. some orange and try to correct that line a little bit, make it softer. That's better. Still not perfect, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Um, you know what, I, I'm going to dull out all my red, my really dark red lines because I don't like them. I'm going to dull them out with some orange. I feel like they take away from it. It becomes a little bit too harsh. I don't want that. So I'm just going to dull them out with orange and do a wash of orange on them. I think that's better. I think that's already softer. Um, and I'm just trying to look away from a distance just to make sure there's still some choppiness on the sides here. So I'm going to play with that still too, before I move on. Awesome. Yeah. So Diana, I don't know if you guys saw her comment, but she has a really good point there. So she says opposite color on the color wheel makes the muddy color, which is really nice for making shadows which is a great, great fact. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and yeah, I absolutely don't mind you sharing your, um, any, any opinion or any facts or any tips and tricks. That's what I want this to be for. I really enjoy painting. I do not have any degrees or any type of <laughs> formal background. I just love it. And I am just guiding you through the way I would approach it. And I do a pretty good job overall, I think, <laughs> in getting the job done. Um, but, um, yeah, like there are so many tips and tricks. So everyone, like if you have ideas, share, um, say what you're doing, say what's working, say what's not. Um, that's what I love about it. So yeah, no, I absolutely don't mind at all, Diana. Feel free. If you have any other things you want to add, go for it. I love it. So I'm going to just do some more lines along the side because I, I want it to be a little bit softer. I feel like I accomplished that nicely in the middle. So now I'm going to do that on the side. So I'm getting some... For me, um, you need to look and see what colors are prominent on yours. Mine's this like lilac purple that I had put in, so I'm going to be playing a lot with that color. Um, I want to keep it light. But I want to make it soft. in but not so see now I can bring in some of that purple into the middle because my yellow has dried so it's not gonna mix in together if that yellow was wet that's that muddy color and it would not um, turn out well for what we're gonna accomplish right here so I'm just using some of that light purple and I'm just going in some a bit of darker in it and then I'm just going to get the water and just wash it out and I'm trying to be mindful with my strokes so that it's like a continuous motion and it's circular and they're connected so it has a nice flow to it and that's a little tricky when it's a fine brush too <laughs> on the canvas but it works out it's working out I think so that's good And again, down here, I know I'm working down here and this is where it's all gonna be covered anyways, but I can't help myself. I wanna make it flowing. Okay. I think I'm almost where I want to be with this and this to take <laughs> a good amount of time. The sky takes this long. <laughs> we'll be together all night. Okay. Um, which I'm okay with because I don't have any other plans personally. I really like doing that. 
balance this is fine I find I didn't really get any kind of like light blue in here so I think I'm gonna add some of that in so I'm gonna get some white into my blue and just get a little bit of light blue into this too because I feel like I'm missing that and I think that will add nicely to it So for me, I find it way easier to control my circle and, and the arc when I do it on the left side. And on the right side, I'm finding it a lot trickier and I'm not getting the lines I want. So just notice you too. You might have like a side that's easier to do than others. And that's, I think, pretty natural. I think <laughs> like the dominant side. However, if you're finding that and you're doing it and you have it on a desk or you have it on like a table or something like just flip your painting around to make it work for you again I want to try and keep this um, in the camera as much as possible so that limits me a little bit um, but I won't but make sure you're like moving your canvas around don't strain your arm or you know if it's not working like remember to move it around Especially right now right now we're just creating this like lovely colorful circle so there's nothing to worry about in terms of it's very organic right like you just want to make it like a colorful fun circle I still want some more of that light blue actually I'll put a little bit in here but I want it to meet My music stopped. Not very nice. Okay, that's softer than it was before, so I do like that more. And just get some more of blue. getting the blue and I'm still using this kind of wash technique so I'm just putting more water on top of the colors I'm adding to kind of blend it as I'm adding the colors into it I try to keep it soft and circular okay all right I think I'm gonna stop there so that it can dry so we can add the little touches of circles that are in the sky to make it look really cool And while that dries for a moment, I'm just going to see what's going on with my music. There we go. I think that should come back on now. Cool. There we go. Alright, so this is... Yeah, there's still some wetness there in the center. And it's still wet there all right so now if you look on the original painting there's like little dots that kind of can highlight the curve that's happening here um, the dots in the center mirror the background color so it has there's white dots that really pop and then there's some darker kind of orangey red dots a few of them just to have the contrast and as you go further out you'll see some like purple the white ones kind of continue a little bit around the lighter areas and then you'll see some purple and some like dark blue ones as well to pop. So we're going to be adding a few of those just to get that feel. And the thing with these as well is that it's they're not like continuous. So it's not like you're just going to start and just start like circling and they're like in perfect um, separation from each other. Um, they're kind of going to give you that vibe of it, um, of this flow. So let's 
start in the middle and I'm gonna use my thin, hmm, you know what? I might use the back tip of my brush, like the actual like pointed part because that this is not gonna create a circle for me and that's gonna make me annoyed <laughs> after a little while. So I think I'm gonna dip it in the white, the tip, and then I'm gonna start in the middle and put a few dots in and see how I like it. And if I wanna continue that way, I will. So dot, 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 need more. You're gonna need paint almost every time you dot. Start off like that. I'm gonna continue with this way. I'm gonna leave a little bit. When you do this, you like pretty much need to put that back in the paint every time, after every like second dot or so. trying to vary the amount of dots as well. I was noticing I was kind of very comfortable with like a five dot pattern. So I'm trying to just make sure I vary that up a little bit. Um, the other thing too is when I'm doing them, I'm any gap from the previous kind of circle, I'm the next circle around it, I have a gap closing that and I think that will contribute to making it more circular and more continuous by doing it that way. Continue doing more white. Let's just continue it. You guys can see that okay? Cool. Perfect. I'll make sure it's still visible. Keep moving around. So I'm gonna have these going out kind of to the 
edge of where my orange is and they might get smaller and kind of disappear and that's gonna let that happen. So what I'd like to do now, I still want a little bit of the white going into the green is, so <laughs> the green, there's not really much green going on in my painting, but um, I'm going to put a little bit into this outside circle here. That's it with the white. Yeah. yeah, okay, so um, let's see. Excuse me. I'm gonna continue outwards and I think I wanna use, hmm, it's very dark. I don't think it's gonna show up very well. I'm gonna put a little bit of black into my blue and get like really dark blue. That's what I'm gonna do. Dots. I think that will work out best. Okay, let's see how that works. Okay, you know what? I'm going to try them down here where it's probably going to be covered a bit. Yeah, that works. It's a good thing because you're going to have a bunch of trees, so you can always practice areas where you're probably gonna cover it with trees <laughs> so it works out kind of nicely yeah it's pretty much black Yeah, I like that. And there are some of the darker ones that go into where the lighter areas are. So where am I gonna put that? Let's see, what would work? Maybe like here? Maybe, hmm, scary part. Maybe up here. stop there yeah I'm gonna stop there you can can you see yeah you can see my dark dots okay good cool so there are some other ones I don't know if I'm gonna add the rest of them right now if I'm gonna leave that as is I kind of I would like to add a little bit of like 
red kind of ones in the middle. I think that would look good. But how well do they do it? Let's see. They're kind of beside it. So. So I'm just adding some red ones too, just close to where the white ones are, just for a little bit of emphasis. But I think that it's working out nicely. It's gonna look good like that. Yeah, I think that actually helped a lot. I like that red in here. And I'm just eyeballing it and just putting it wherever I think I should. I don't know how else to say it. So I'm looking for kind of like empty spots that um, I think would benefit for a little bit of additional color and I'm sometimes I'm placing them where along where the white ones kind of went my dot's kind of weird but that's fine big smushy dot and some I'm bringing outside too so I think that yeah, I'm gonna leave that as is. I, I really like it. I think it's popping really good. Pop a locking. All right, so I want this to dry a little bit, and then we're gonna start working on our background trees. And I think, I mean, the dots are a little bit weird, but I don't think that's gonna interfere too much with what we're doing with the trees. So I think we're gonna get started on that. Um, just for the sake of time, because it's already been an hour and we've like just done the sky. <laughs> and doing the detailed in the mushrooms and stuff is not going to be any faster. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's block in where we want these trees to go. Um, I'm going to use almost a black, to be honest. I think I'm going to use black for the background trees. Um, maybe a really dark green. So I might just put a little bit of some black into my green and make it very 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 dark black overpowers everything pretty much so it's gonna end up being almost black as it is maybe like okay that works I'm just using my thin brush just to decide where I want the trees to be so we have one on the outside here and it lives like here Okay, our first tree. Okay, and there's another one that's kind of balances him out on this side. Okay, and I'm just gonna draw it in with the paint. Okay, and then let's put some branches in. So it's the same color, just dabbing back and forth, making it a little bit fatter as they go down the tree and a little bit bigger. I don't want to keep it light at the top. Can you guys see that okay? Okay. And again, this is like the background tree, so keep that in mind. We're going to be putting more things on top of this. We're going to do the same thing with this one here. So. 
dabbing. Dabbing. And I want to be able to see my branches, so I don't want to cover my background fully and completely. And this is just like, you're not gonna be able to see this tree very well. So don't stress about how the branches look. Just get that shade back there, okay? We're gonna be putting in some more background trees. Okay, this is gonna be like another one that lives like here. Okay, and same thing. Okay, and I'm just dabbing, and as I'm going down, I'm making it bigger, but that, that's gonna be covered up anyway. So we're gonna put more trees in front of him. Okay, and another tree is gonna live like here, a little bit higher. Let's get more paint on my brush. I'm just like smushing my paintbrush down, leaving some gaps in the tree. With a lot of paint on the brush, you're gonna have a lot more um, dense trees. With less paint, it's gonna be a bit more airy, so you're gonna see more through it. But again, this is just the background trees, so we just want some shadows of trees. So I'm gonna put another like shadow tree like here. another one over here just put them wherever you want to put them I want to still put a pretty good amount in the background Do you want them back here? Yeah, sure. We want a few here. Is putting a bunch of trees um, shadows along this curve that we've created cool tree curve all right so um, now I'm gonna put in I want to put in a, a tree more in the fork like more in the front a bit um, but let me just think about how we're gonna do this because we still need some good background here before we put in all of our foreground things and I'm just thinking I kind of want to make it kind of like a mushy like um so it just has like shrubbery kind of feel to it so that's what I'm gonna do now before I put in any more trees okay I'm gonna get my I think my medium yeah my medium brush and I'm going to what colors do I want to use I want it to be some greens and blacks I still want to be pretty dark uh, but I do want it maybe a little bit lighter than what I have there. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of water and I'm just going to get some paint on here. And then in this line or when we get to the trees, 
I want you to smush it around so there's a bit of texture that's being created. So it's not just like soft, painty lines. We're gonna paint over this, but this is just to give you um, background so you're not gonna have the canvas showing through. Okay. And I'm using green and I'm using um, black. Okay, and I want this to come down um, like, I don't know how far I want this to come down. I think about here, if not all the way down, to be honest, because we do kind of want that background. Yeah, you know what? But I think I'm going to want to, I want to make it a little bit lighter as I come down. So I'm going to keep it kind of like a blacky green, almost like a mountain, like mountains, really. That's kind of what it looks like right now. Maybe you decide to keep that. And then as you come down, I'm going to just have more of a green. I still want it a bit dark, just so the other stuff pops on it. And I want it to be more of a wash, I think. So I'm just watering it down a bit. I just want this to be like a background because I want all of that foreground stuff to come through, but I do want a base of paint on my canvas before I paint um, all of that stuff in the front. Okay. I guess I'm just using water, so it kind of ends up being more of like a wash of it, but I still want it to be pretty opaque but it doesn't need to be like super opaque because my intention is to paint everything on top of it anyways. Okay, just get some green going. I need more. I'm using a pre-mixed green to do this just for the sake of time and consistency. And then my black, I'm just digging into here. And in the foreground, it doesn't really matter how it looks. Like it can be pretty soft and easy back and forth. When you get into this tree line, let's smush in the colors just so it, anything that will be remaining to see, it will kind of look like it has some texture to it. So up here, we want it to be a bit more smushing. You want it to go up to cover wherever that end of your sky hits. And it's okay if it covers some of your trees because you're gonna be putting stuff in front of it, so that's fine. Just want it to be a bit smushy. Smushy, smushy, smushy. are all good so far and people have dropped off they're like this is taking way too long <laughs> I warned you it's a long one it's fun it's a fun one but it's it's a long one different colors. I feel like that should have been a bit darker up here. Okay, we got some good values in there. Nice, greeny, blacky, beautiful. Magical sky. Like, yep, I'm done. I'm just gonna have it like this. <laughs> Forget about everything else. I don't blame you if that's what you want to do. I get it. Um, okay, so I need more paper towel too. I'm just gonna grab some more because what I'm working with is not drying anything off for me. Okay, so now let's build in some more of those trees now that we have a bit of a background because now where the base lands of the tree, then we're gonna kind of keep it there. I don't have to worry about the white of the canvas showing through. So I'm gonna start this tree off. Hmm, they're still pretty dark. I wanna go lighter. I'm gonna start off a little bit darker than what I would like, but still a little lighter than the ones I just did. Okay, so I'm gonna put a tree, a bigger one, like, oh yeah, you can't even see that. Ridiculous. There we go. Okay, so I need to get more of this green color in. Okay, so I'm gonna do a 
same thing, but this green color. And smush it, smush it. As it comes down, it gets bigger and they're more full. Right now, yeah, that's better. So now the front, I don't have to worry so much about that canvas showing through. Great. some of these I'm just putting it some lighter I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow I think too and just touch a little bit of the branches where I want some of the Sun Sun moonlight or the light let's just call it the light to hit okay. so I'm doing mostly on the inside branches the ones that are closer to the light source Touching it up a little bit with yellow. And just giving it a little bit more texture and depth. Okay, cool. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice tree. Okay, next one up. Let's do one more on the other side. Nice big lighter color tree going in. dark I meant to say. There we go. Get that green and just go do 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 Just get paint on the brush and then bring it back and forth. Start smaller at the top and as you make your way down your tree make your branches bigger. It'll come up further. Any more foliage. Keep spaces between them just so the light and the other shadow of the trees can show through. That will just look, it'll look cooler. It'll look nicer. Okay, there's no wrong way to do it. If they become more denser, then they just have a denser forest. So it's, it works out just fine. Again, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on here. So I just put yellow on my brush and then I'm just touching the branches as I go. And then I'm just, some of it that's a little bit too bright yellow, I'm just going back over and just retouching it with my brush to soften it a bit. Okay, there we go. That's a pretty tree. All right, I want to put maybe like Maybe another one like here and then another one on this side, I think. Yeah, maybe two more, two or three more, I'm not sure, before I go on to the next spot. I do like them. Okay, so I'm just gonna get more of my green going. Okay, I'm gonna put another one like, well, the mushroom head's gonna be like there, but I think I do want another one like maybe here. Yeah, just put one in near it. Okay, so a little bit more lighter green. Put a little bit of yellow. Just dabbing it on the tops of my branches just to get a little bit of feeling for that. Okay, here we go. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. That's good. And do I want to put another one in, or let me see. I might be there's a big old mushroom head that's gonna kind of block this area. The smaller one here. So I do think I want a little bit more foliage on this side in the background. So again, just judge how yours is, is looking and then make your assessment if you want to put another tree in or not. I'm going to put another one right here on mine. Okay, so I can zigzag 
I think that's good. I like that guy there. All right, I think we're good. I don't know if I want to put any more on that side. No, I think that's good. All right, cool. All right, so now we have, um, so like I said, so yeah, it's been now, it's almost 3.30. So now we have the background and we have our trees going and we still haven't touched the front. So now we're gonna get started on that. So the next step of this, there's a few little things going on here. So there are some nice, I think they kind of look like, I don't know what type of flowers they are, but they look kind of like lilacs-ish to me, but they might be a different type of flower. Um, they kind of like come up and they have like a little bit of little flower dots all over the place. Um, I'm just thinking, I think we can do that after we do the mushrooms. I don't think they're going to interfere too much. Um, yeah, I think that we're good. All right, I think we're going to pop in the first mushroom head. Let's do that. I just need to move this so I can see it better. This is the first for me. I have never painted mushrooms before, so this is what we're gonna do. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start off to approach it. I wanna um, get the outline in and the shape of it in, and I'm gonna do that in probably a white, and then I'll put more colors into it as I go. So kind of just like as if you're drawing on a, a piece of paper how you want it to be. So I'm going to get white on my um, paintbrush and I'm just going to put water into my white so that it's um, very much almost like ink on my paintbrush. So when I do this, it should be smooth. Whenever I block in an image, I try to go smaller than bigger at first because it's easier to um, make it more meatier and <laughs> fatter than it is to try to like correct a mistake if you've gotten too big. So I want this guy to live, he's a big old one. So kind of like, it kind of comes out and it goes up and then goes down. It's like a fancy hat. Okay, and then it comes down around this way. This side is hard to see, so it kind of goes off the canvas a bit. Then it also will come down around this side. Okay. And it's going to meet in the middle. Okay. All right. And then the center, like, where's the stem going to go? Is that fat enough? Do I want it to be bigger? Okay. You know what? I'm going to color this guy in just so I can really see how it's going to feel once I have the actual colors going. I'm just gonna color it all in in white. And then I'll put in the details in a little bit. This will also give me a better base so the color will pop on it. Cause right now, obviously it's like a very dark green or black. I'm just gonna look back for a moment and see if I want it to be bigger. I think I kind of do. I kind of want the head of it to be a little bigger. I want this to come out a little bit more. Like that. I think that's nicer like that. Okay, cool. And then I want this to be 
a bit smoother of a transition. There we go. Okay, cool. So that's where my first mushroom's gonna live. And then this stem is going to come about the middle there and it's gonna come down. It's a little curved as well. Okay, so I'm going to just do it in a step until about there. Okay, cool. There we go. Okay, so let's start playing with this one. Okay, so this guy is kind of like a, has like some reddish, I'm going to make him like reddish with kind of yellow. So similar to the one in the picture, I'm going to stick with that idea. Okay, so we have where we want this pers person. <laughs> Mushroom's now a person apparently in my books. Okay, so if I put red right on there, it's going to make a pink because it's um, wet right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump over and I'm going to plot out where I want the mushroom on this side to live um, just for the sake of um, continuity and letting it dry. Then maybe I can bounce over between the both mushrooms and get them both done around the same time. Okay, this one's a smaller mushroom. Um, so the top of him is going to be here. Not wet enough. Okay, so there's the top. And then it's gonna come out. My head's in the way, sorry. Okay, I need just a little bit more viscous. Almost like a little uh, alien ship. Okay, this one stem. That's good there. Okay, cool. Is this dry yet? No. Okay, so what other mushroom are we gonna do? Maybe we'll do the one that's kind of weird shape there. Okay, let's get some more water and paint on my brush. This white has dried off quite a bit. Okay, so I'm going to do the other one. It's like weird one here. Yeah, it's that guy. Okay, so let's get the base. The base of this one's a little bit chubbier. Okay, there we go. That's very flat. I don't really like that so much. It needs to come out a little bit. 
Yeah. So if it's not like even on both sides, it's fine. But if it's really straight lines or very like perfectly circular, you know, like if it's too perfect, doesn't make sense because nature is not like that. I think this one actually kind of comes out more like that too. So just step back a little bit and look at your shapes just to make sure they aren't have, don't have super straight lines. The left side of the canvas. Um, I don't know if the I have it fully centered right now. So when I just look at the picture on my phone, it is fully centered on my phone. So I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if you need to like move. I do have it zoomed in. I don't know if that helps. That's I zoomed it out fully. So now it's fully zoomed out. Not sure if that helps you, Kathleen. Hopefully. Okay, so are we dry now? Let's see. Oh yeah. Cute. Okay, so you got some of the shapes going here. Okay, so let us start. I'm painting in this one. So this one, I want to start off with red. I do kind of want to make it brighter red than like the one that's in the picture. Almost Mario-ish. It's kind of my feel. Okay, so this does have, um, it does curve here. I'm just gonna do it in red, even though it changes to like things. I'm just gonna go with a little hat of the mushroom. So I'm just following along with the image. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna get red. Good, I'm glad that helped. Okay, awesome. Red. I'm just using some water because it is um, also quite thick. Okay, so I want this to go. Okay, and I'm going to try to get that kind of blend going on where it's a little bit darker on this side, and as it gets into the light, it does get a little bit lighter. It is picking up my white um, because I am using water. So it might turn a little pinkish, but that's okay. I'm just mixing yellow into it just to start that change. I'm gonna clean off my brush so all the red is gone from it. And I'm gonna get yellow, and I want yellow to be on this side. So I'm gonna just start it off here. gonna blend into that other color. I'm gonna try to work quickly so it doesn't dry before I get there. It's not what I want to happen. So I do want it to be fully yellow on this side. And I'm gonna bring it in. So I want to bring the yellow into it. So kind of like every time you bring the yellow, you need to like clean off your brush. As soon as it goes into the other color, it picks it up. And then if you go back into your yellow, you will end up dragging that ready orange back into it. So I'm just using my fingers and I'm literally putting paint all over my fingers. You can use like a paper towel or something instead. I'm just, that's how I do it. My fingers are usually covered in paint. Okay, so there. So I have like kind of the gradation of the color, but I also want to put the highlight because there's a good like nice highlight on this mushroom. Um, and I'm going to do that with white. So I'm going to do that. Put my brush in the white. Start with this, maybe like here. I don't think I need more white. 
on here. I want it to blend a little bit, which is why I'm doing it still when the paint is wet. So I'm just adding a little bit of white and I'm just blending it into the wet paint. And I'm using my finger. You need your brush too, but I'm finger painting today apparently. So now let's get the underbelly of this mushroom. And the music stopped again, so let me just see what's going on. <laughs> okay, I think it's back and connected again. So we're going to do the underbelly of that mushroom in a moment. I just want to get some music going again, but I don't think it's going to happen. All right, we'll leave it for now and see if it reconnects. Okay. Um, so um, I think I want to grab some of my pre-made brown as well. So here's when you can mix um, uh, some of your complementary, I mean, sorry, your opposite colors, and then you can get some good underbelly colors for it. I'm going to use the brown just for the sake of convenience and also I'm um, mixing it in with some of my orange. So I'm going to just get this bottom part going. So let's, so I'm just going to get it pretty much covered in brown. And I'm going to add some detail to it afterwards. Okay. And this base here starts off red. mixing some red in my brown just to get this base going as well putting a little bit of water make it smooth So we got the base of that. Okay, so I think, let's see, what do I want to use? I want it to dry a little bit more than that. And then I'm going to put in some colors with that. 
I think I want to add the white highlight though on the mushroom. This one here. Pure white one. Now that this is dry too. There we go. To this guy here. So funky. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, so for this one here, I'm gonna jump over here while that part dries. Once that dries, I'll add some of the details to the underbelly of the, the mushroom. Okay, so let's do that one now. So um, I'm gonna need to put more paint on my palette because it is pretty darn dry. It has been out for almost two hours, which makes sense. Um, I think I need more white as well. I'm almost out of that white. There we go. Okay, cool. So um, with this mushroom, I want it to be predominantly red as well. So I'm just going to put red and just wet it a little bit. But this one just came fresh from the bottle, so it actually is pretty good to use. Okay, so again, I wanna just decide where I want the top and where I want the bottom of this to be. So that's the line there. And then it's gonna curve a little bit down that way. And it's going to curve a little bit down that way. Oof, I got in the background. <laughs> that may not have been a good idea. Okay. So now I'm going to paint this mushroom red. Okay, I'm just going to get all red going. with this one um, we do have some color variation in it so we do have it a little bit lighter on the top so I'm going to use the yellow I don't think it's going to work that well I probably should have put that one first actually the yellow but I'm going to try anyways blend some yellow at the tippity top okay. and then I'm going to bring this a little bit down Actually, that worked okay. Just to make it a little bit lighter at the top, right? That's how it is on the picture. Okay, great. Okay, cool. I'm going to get a little bit more yellow and try to highlight it a little bit more on the top. I do that it's still wet so it's blending but it's still giving me that it's like a little kiss of sunlight on the top there awesome so I want to put in some nice um, white dots on there because that's totally gonna be a Mario mushroom and I'm very excited about it um, and then the base of that one is very it's white but it has like a nice black kind of line in it and then the base and then this um, stem is a is a brown as well so I'm gonna do the stem let's make get that guy going my brown paint. I'm going to paint the stem. The underbelly of this guy is predominantly white it looks like so we're going to I'm going to keep the white that we have and then we'll just add some
detail to it. Okay, there we go. Not too shabby. Okay, so I do want a little bit of black. I want it to be gray. I want a gray color. So I'm just putting a little black into my white. A little bit wet my black has been out for a little while so I'm just gonna wet it a little bit with water my thin brush and we're good to go hi Hermie glad you're jumping in saying hi all right I'm just gonna put a little bit darker actually because I want it to be slightly darker okay and I'm just going to outline Oh, that's pretty much black. We'll just go with that. With my fine brush, just the rim of the underbelly and the top part of my mushroom. Okay. Almost that was my color. Okay. See how black's not the color. It's not way lighter. So there we go, and then this is actually going to be carried forth. I'm going to carry that line down towards where the stem is. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. She worked out that I had black and it was like a dark gray, so that kind of looks good. That works okay cool and then I'm gonna do the same thing around where it connects to base but I'm gonna so I'm gonna circle it or outline it I should say I need to be a little bit more watery here and then so okay if it gets a little fat it's fine because then we're just gonna bring it up a little bit that works out okay I feel like I made it a little bit exposed at the bottom but that's okay we'll work with it okay so I'm just gonna get my gray again got a little bit too wet okay I'm trying so it's not super wet So I'm just going to add a few little like lines in the white to make it feel like the underbelly of the mushroom. It's annoying because my brush is not super thin, so it's not doing it exactly the way I want it to be. But I'm just going to throw it in like that, and then maybe I'll go back in and put some more white on it if I find that it's a little bit too dark. But for now, I'm going to leave that as is. Um, that's still pretty wet, so let's come back over to this guy here. Okay, cool. So, excuse me, so this underbelly here is kind of like a, a lighter brown, so I'm going to get some yellow and put a little bit of brown into the yellow. It's going to be pretty much that color, but I want it a little lighter, but I'm going to lighten it with yellow instead of white. So it kind of creates this kind of that kind of color. It's just a little bit lighter. I'm just going to put more water because it's still pretty thick. Okay. And we're going to put in some of the lines of this underbelly and then we also the dark in the sides too. So try to touch it very tricky so I'm just gonna follow the curvature of the mushroom okay and the ones out here are a bit longer and then they kind of tilt more towards upwards so like these ones are gonna be smaller lines I'm going to leave 
already got. I say as I go back in to touch it. <laughs> Being in my group, that's what I keep doing. Okay, and then there's also some, like, there's like a little doodad mushroom little skirt kind of hair thing going on here. So I'm just going to add that in while I have the color on my brush. And then I'm just going to go in and out, put a, a little bit of black into some brown. And I'm going to do the like shadow, a little bit of shadow, like the lip around this mushroom. So there's a bit of a dark line that lives just under, so I'm just going to line it. that and then it also is around this guy all around him yeah all the way like that and then it also kind of sticks out a little bit I'm just gonna dab in the areas particularly the areas that already have the darker brown in it, and I'm just gonna make it go into this stem part too. And then I think it's like a little bit in this little skirty thing that we made, but just I'm touching the ends a little bit just to give it a little bit of shadow, and a little bit along the top. Yeah, that's what I'm doing with that guy. All right, cool. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this mushroom guy now, and I'm just gonna put in a little bit of texture on. Um, it's stem. I'm going to use red to do that because I colored that guy in brown. So I'm just going to get red on my brush and I'm just going to put like a line of red coming down just to add a little bit of color into that guy. Cool. And then I'm going to also start doing some of my dots. I'm going to get white on my brush. So we want our dots, so I'm going to have one right here, okay, <laughs> and I'll put a smaller one here, see if my brush cooperates. Okay, and I'm going to put another one on this side here. little circly mushrooms circle on the mushrooms all right okay great so what else do we need we need to get this guy going so let's paint that guy so that guy is also brown but he's a bit more orangey so I'm gonna get some orange and brown going get a base color for him Okay, so let's do that. <laughs> I think, yeah, that, that works. I need to get some more brown paint on here too. Okay, so let's get that side. coloring in this kind of orangey brown on this mushroom guy.
Okay, she's gone. Nice. Okay, great. I'm just going to put some more brown on my palette so I can play with that guy a bit. Okay, so I want to put some brown. Okay, so I want to get it under this line here. Like that. And then I want it to come up. to it. Okay, we'll add some lighter colors on the top in a moment. And then the base of it, also with this brown, I want to just darken it up a little bit. And also round it. So kind of like if you ever were in art class in high school, I think probably high school, I don't know if it was in elementary school, and you had like a sphere and you had to like shadow it and make it look circular. So you want to put darker around this curve here. And as it gets further into the ball here, it gets lighter. So we're going to just blend in kind of a bit of a circular motion, similar to like what we did at the top where it's kind of like in a circular. Okay. So just so we can create it so it's a little bit rounded. dries you can go in and put like a more of a darker line in but for right now we're just gonna do the brown go back with the orange and just mix it a bit to get this circular feeling the base is kind of circular okay and then the top of the sky I think I want it to be yellow So I just put yellow on here and then I just put water and I'm just smoothing the yellow down into the orange. Okay, and I'm trying to keep the brown that I put in still there. So I'm trying just to put this yellow on where the orange is. To be a bit lighter at the top and also on the side where we're getting a bit of sunlight. Okay, I'm gonna get some white and I'm gonna do the same thing. Just gonna put white on the top and the sides. And I just made it a little bit weird, so I'm just gonna get white uh, water and just smooth that out on that side. Okay. White also comes down this way too. Kind of weird because it looks like it's like another base, and I don't want that. Just a different coloring. Okay. So just playing with this a little bit. Okay, I think that guy is all right. I think I'll leave that for now. Okay, so 
right now we are at our two hour mark um, so this is taking quite a bit of time so I just wanted to call attention to that um, if you guys need to drop off for any reason that's totally fine the paint this will can be on there so you can always jump back on and, and check it out afterwards I'm gonna continue putting in a few more elements in here um, I may not keep this going till I'm completely done depending on timing because I may have to um, stop um, in about half an hour so I'll keep going for another half an hour but I'll try to get all the components in that we'll need to complete the painting and then we might have to um, venture off and uh, complete the rest of it on our own um, but for now let's see what else we can put in here in this time so um, it's looking really good I'm really happy with the mushrooms I think they look really awesome um, I do want to put another mushroom like two mushrooms here and there's like a little knobby one here um, Hmm. I'm debating whether I want to do that now or if I want to move on to something else because I kind of want to show you guys a bit how to do those crystals and some of those flowers and stuff um, however I do want to block in where I want the mushrooms so I'm thinking I want to block in first where I want the mushrooms so I'm going to get white again with some water and then I'm going to block in where I want these other mushrooms to live so this one is here there's his his hat okay and then it's gonna come out and down and this one's gonna come out and down here I'm gonna paint that all in white And the stem is going to be like here. Okay. And then there's another guy, another mushroom fella over here. It's very circular. Right. And then it's going to come in. And then the base. Okay, so let's paint that all in white too. put in this round knobby guy here looking fella okay so that's blocked out where our mushroom fellas are gonna live and again you can feel free to add more if you're really digging the mushroom fellas you can put like another one ah <laughs> that's when I paint on my canvas that's okay I can make that into like a blade of grass or something um, you can put another guy like here if you want or another guy there like if you're really digging that mushroom feel you can put more into it that works out quite nicely um, I'm gonna put in a few of the background um, I'm just gonna call them like like a uh, lilacs but I don't they're not exactly <laughs> but we're just gonna call them that for for the heck of it um, okay so I'm gonna use um, green just to base out I think Green's gonna be weird just where I want stems of them to live I want some of them to be so I do want one like here and I want another one to come this way and I want another one here 
kind of following the original painting. Uh, I'm gonna go there. Uh, I'm gonna go there. Okay, and there's gonna be another one like here and here. This is gonna be a guide where I'm gonna be able to paint all the little flowers on it. Okay, cool. Um, and there's some in the front too, but we're gonna work on the ones in the back. So with these ones, you're just gonna go, I'm gonna use my pre-mixed um, purple and my white, and I'm just gonna dab little dots to give the feeling of like little flowers and petals. So I'm gonna start off with um, my purple. Okay, and we're gonna start with this guy, and I'm just gonna boop, 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 boop and put dots all the way down, which you can't really see because the purple is not showing up very well on the green, but that's okay. We're gonna start off that way and then when we put the white, it will pop a bit more. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna put dots, 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 dots. And this works too if you think about how if you joined me for the lilac painting we did a few weeks ago um, that will come in handy because that's kind of what you do you put a base of your purple and then you build on with white and then you just go back and forth between the colors until you get the values that you are enjoying we're going to do the same thing with these i'm just going to do i'm trying to get through it a little faster so we can get to the crystals before another half an hour goes by. So I'm just dotting. And the curved one. And I'm gonna get the white. watch your brush shape and if you end up just keeping it the same for too long it's going to end up looking too um, much like um, too patterned so just move the brush a bit so it's not all like the same pattern all the way down yeah absolutely okay so so Diana, I, my plan is to do the crystal right after I put some of these in. Um, and Melanie, yes. So what I did was I put, I just used green just to place my stems wherever I wanted them to be. You can't even see the green, um, really. It's just a guide. And then I got my um, purple and I just dotted it with my fine brush, just like a couple dots along the stem. Um, and then I went with my white now and I'm just going and putting some more dots in. And my purple still wet on some spots and that's fine because then it kind of picks it up with the white and then it gives it like a lighter color and then when I'm done I'm gonna take a look and I might go back in and put some more purple over the white depending on how it looks and vice versa I might go back in and put white after that like depending how many layers you want to do or how happy or not happy you are with them and just with the brush just make sure so my brush tends to not stay obviously like in a circle pattern like it kind of starts becoming very um i don't know it just looks like a stamp almost if i keep it always the same way so i'm trying just to turn it and move it around as i'm using it so it, it doesn't just give me like the same kind of effect the whole time okay 
So, so now I feel like there's still a bit too much white in them. So I'm gonna go back over with my purple and put in some more little dots. soften that white up a little bit and I think that will look nicer. I don't want it to be like super white, I still want it to be very purpley. But having the white there will make the purple pop, especially on this, um, the background so dark. My husband and son are playing video games and the vent to the basement is like right I'm in I'm on the top floor but the, this is the vent that's like right where they are where they're playing so I just heard them like yell in despair <laughs> it's pretty funny like no I guess they were beat or something My son, who used to join me in the painting, is now playing video games, so I guess I think I've lost a painting partner to video games once again. Alright, that's okay. I'm a little annoyed with this pattern here. I kind of was too similar, so. Okay, just want to get some color on there, and then we can always touch it and play with that more later, because I want to get into a few more aspects before time just keeps sliding away okay so the crystal let's see how we're gonna do this so so it's got some color going on it's highlighted with white so the white is really gonna be the outline of the crystal and then we're gonna darken certain areas up with some black and also put some color into it and some dots to bring it all together okay we're gonna do this right now okay so let us play with the crystal the big old crystal right in the middle Okay, so that point's gonna be boom. Okay. Okay, so I want my paint, my white paint, to be really easy to use. So I'm putting water in it, getting my paintbrush, getting the ink, so flow like ink. It's gonna drive me crazy if it doesn't go properly. Ah, okay. So the point is gonna be up here. We're gonna start, uh, make a line. I think that's how big that top part's gonna be. Yeah, well, let's, let's stick with that. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Is it gonna go down? No, it's gonna stay a bit further back. And it is, that works. Okay, then I'm going to bring this up together helps that my son was doing uh, 3d shapes in school before the school year was up I <laughs> didn't know that was gonna help me in the process Actually, I think that happened in another painting we did too and I was like oh look at that helpful schoolwork for grade twos okay and then I'm gonna bring a line down try to make it straight all the way down oh yeah that's not straight okay so we got that going and then now we're gonna bring this down okay and we're gonna bring this down Okay, so we have the outline of this crystal going on. All right, there's some good colors happening here and I wanna try to capture them. How are we gonna do that? Let's see. Okay, I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna get some blue and I wanna try to make it light. So I'm gonna put white into that blue Get a very light blue going on, watery. Make sure it's nice and easy to spread. My blue is a little bit hard too. Okay, and I want some blue on this side, so I'm gonna put some blue in. Get 
darker blue. I'm just going to add a little bit to the side here, just blend it a little bit into that light blue, not all the way, just on the side. And if I go and if we go over that white line we made, we can always redo that line. So don't worry about that. So I just want to bring that over more. Like that. That's good. Okay. And then I want to get some white. Okay. So now, okay. So I'm trying to keep this side a little bit lighter, and then blending it into being darker. Okay, so this corner here, the left side, is going to be white. It's going to go into the lighter blue, and then it's going to be darker blue along the middle part of it. So I'm going to still bring more of this light color in here. Okay, so again, when we're blending, every time you blend into a darker color, your, paint, your brush is going to pick it up. So you need to either clear off your brush well yeah you should just clear off your brush because <laughs> that's the best way to say it not really either that's kind of the way to do it okay so we have colors going on like that and then I just want to mirror this light this darker blue into the lighter blue the darker blue will overpower the lighter one and it will just soften it slightly and I think that's working that's working it's all like a play play with it just gonna soften that line so it's not super hard okay so we have that side I still before this is done we're still gonna add some dots and stuff to make it look more less like a, a weird tent that's been erected in the middle of this you know, field, which honestly that could work too. <laughs> the elves need some place to live. Okay, so I'm gonna get some purple, some red, and some white, and I'm gonna do the other side, in kind of a purpley, ready, white kind of feel to it. We'll see how that goes. going to fill this in with this like I think it just turned into like a pink color really okay and then I'm going to get purple now and similarly so it's going to be darker purple on this side here I'm going to try to pull this into this lighter color need to get more of that darker purple. Mm. It keeps pulling a lot of that lighter color in. Okay, and I want to keep that lighter. I just need to look from far away. Okay, yeah, it's better. I want to get some white, and I want to put this lighter here. So this is going to be darker on that side and it's lighter on the inside. And the tip is pretty white too actually. On both sides. So I'm just going to Okay. So I'm just going to clean that brush off. Okay, so I just put some white and then I'm just like sweeping in the other color into it just so it's not like super white coming down it just has the tip tip is white all right it still looks like a weird tent we'll go from there <laughs> we'll see how that goes it's okay we'll put in some like white lines on it after it dries okay so let's get the background in on the sides of this guy too um so it's pretty dark so let's just go right to the black Get the, the background of this 
crystal. It's just, it's, you can't see the green grass in it. So I'm just going to make it black. Okay, we're just going to sweep that. Again, if you go over the white line, it's fine. We can go over it again. I just want that side to be pretty dark. Okay, and the other side ten, seems to be a bit doesn't have the same kind of darkness going into it, but it doesn't have green either. Let me think. You know what? I'm going to do like a, an orangey brown on that side, I think, as the base, and then we'll build from there. I think that's what I'm going to try. Let's see how that goes. I'm not going all the way down because there's supposed to be some other crystals popping up on either side. Okay, so um, it's still pretty wet. Uh, I'm gonna wait till that dries and then I'm gonna bring in some lines of some like blue and some oranges and some other colors to come up to try to give it a bit more of a feel to that. And then we'll also go over it, the white lines again and then we'll put in some additional streaks of white just to give it that kind of like um, effect, like that that shine or that, um, what well, not the shine, the reflection. Um, and I'll put some dots in as well. And I think that will make that work. So while that is drying, um, I think I'm just gonna go in and just start playing with this, with this guy. Well, actually I can show, mm, should I wanna do some grass? Yeah, you know what, maybe I'll just show a bit of how to do some of the grass that you wanna do in case um, anyone need some help with that. So that's drying. I'm going to go green. I need more green. The grass is pretty easy. But we'll touch on that before we finish our weird crystal tent. Okay. So for the grass, we're just going to have the blades just kind of come out. You want to try to have it pretty opaque. Okay, and we want to just have, so some of these ones are just, they seem to be kind of curved outwards. So depending on how your brush goes, um, mine tends to end in a, a better point than where it starts. So you want to just see how the brush kind of works with that, and then you want to just pop those in the way you think it would be good. Some more streaks. can be thicker than others. And we can add some um, different highlights and stuff to it as well. I don't really want to cover this guy up too much. I kind of like the way I did his the base of him. Some are gonna go behind this mushroom guy. Okay. And then if you want to put some, my hair looks dried up. <laughs> I like to use yellow on the green. You could use white too if you want. But I think yellow looks a little bit more natural for the highlights of it. So I'm just going to get some yellow on here and then I'm just going to put on some of the blades, just touch it with some, a little bit of yellow.
cool. So it just adds a little bit more to the grass and just makes it pop a bit. So that's how I would do pretty much all the grass. Julie, yes, this should have been a two part class. I absolutely agree. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely agree future Lisa will keep that in mind for other options I, I totally agree this is very long okay let's go back and um, touch up the crystal and let's see how we can get that to look more crystally versus like a weird um, tent um, okay so I want to get some of that light blue but I want it a tad darker I still want it to show up on the black which is why I want it to have a bit of a white base in it if I put the regular blue on here it's gonna be hard for it to see okay, I want it to be very streaky and I'm gonna put in a few lines which hopefully they're gonna be thin enough come up like so try to make them thin and straight And then I want to get the white. And then we're going to do the same thing. A little bit of white. And then I'm just going to re put in my lines. Which is good because I kind of messed up the one line initially, so that works out nicely. Okay, so the lines are better there, and now we're going to add a few more white lines on here too. So I want to add I just want to put on one line here like that, and then I want to do the same thing There we go and then I want to put some lines here. That I think. Okay, and I want it to have some orange on that side. same technique that I did at the top there I'm just gonna soften it a bit a bit of water So it's not so rigid these lines and then softening it will just make it over the black I think that will look better Yep. there we go 
I'm just putting water to soften the crystal a bit. So it looks a little bit more iridescent. And then I want to put in, you know what? I'm going to use the back of my brush to kind of put in some little dotties. Where do I want these dotties? Oh, that kind of did form the side of it. Oh, well, I want one here, I want one here, here. And then I think I want one like. I think that's where I'm going to put that. All right. Okay, so right now it is 4.35. You, I still have 10 of you guys. You guys are such troopers. My goodness. Okay, so um, what I'll do is I'll continue a bit. Um, what I'm going to do is, so I think my crystal, I'm, we got the elements down, so I showed you guys how to do um, a couple different mushroom styles. The other ones kind of follow the same pattern. Um, this one's going to be similar to the way this one looks, it seems, and so is this one. And this one's a little knobby one that's like a small version of that guy. Um, I showed you how to do some of the grass. So the grass we're going to continue and then um, there's also some more crystals that are going to be going in here. I'm not exactly sure how I want to put those ones in. Um, I might play with it a bit. Um, and then some more grass in the background as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play a little bit with um, this mushroom here um, and then I'll call it a wrap uh, for today for now because yeah, this has been um, a very long session. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna do this guy. So I'm gonna get red on him. And honestly, I'm just getting hungry. <laughs> so I think if I wasn't getting hungry, I would I would be like, let's just keep going. But um, sorry, my, my hunger is getting to me. So I'm going to do this mushroom and then I'm going to call it a wrap for now. Okay, so I want the top part to be red. 